हरे कृष्णा दंडवत प्रणाम टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम द बुक द मैसेज ऑफ गॉड हेड बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रीला प्रभुपाद वी रीडिंग द चैप्टर नंबर टू कर्म योगा एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेर वी स्टॉप येस टुडे पेज फोर्टी फाइव It is generally experienced that workers in big mills and factories are addicted to many abominable habits and thus they gradually glide down to the lowest status to which a human being can descend but if they are graciously offered the advantage of partaking of the remnants of food stuffs offered to vishnu gradually they will develop a transcendental sense of spirituality and rise to the same status as that of spiritually advanced personalities However these people cannot rise to that exalted position of harijans people of god simply by being rubber stamped as such if they are influenced by a desire other than the transcendental service of vishnu every effort to raise them up from their degraded position will result in disaster and disturbance of the peace and tranquility of the social order leaders who incite such downtrodden laborers uselessly simply for the sake of temporary gain can never do the laborers any good nor can the leaders themselves benefit by such ill conceived actions on the contrary through such material activities both the laborers and the capitalist inevitably fall into unwholesome quarreling and so bring on great disturbance of the social order the problem can be solved only by determined program of karma yoga If karma yoga is systematically performed we shall transcend and more than fulfill all fragmented endeavors whether by socialist towards equality by the bosh boshviks towards a grand social order of fraternity or by the laborites towards a mundane heaven wherein laborers surpass capitalists in the acquisition of wealth fraternity in human society develops gradually from love for self to love for family from love for family to love for community from love for community to love for nation and from love for nation to the love for the international community and in this gradual process there is always a center of attraction that helps over love progress and that helps our love progress and develop from one stage to another we do not know however that in this constant struggle for fraternal development the ultimate center of attraction is neither the family the community nor the nation not even the international community but the all pervading godhead vishnu this ignorance is due to the material curtain the illusory energy of the absolute truth the great devotee prahlad maharaj confirms that people in general do not know that the ultimate center of attraction is vishnu the supreme personality of godhead and in the vishnu category shri krishna is the supreme attraction in fact the word krishna is derived from the root kris meaning that which attracts thus there cannot be any other name of absolute truth than krishna the all attractive learned sages have made extensive research in this connection and they have firmly concluded that krishna is the supreme godhead the sages of naima sharanya at present nimsar in sitapur district up who assembled under the presidency of sutta goswami discussed in detail all the various incarnations of the absolute truth they came to the conclusion that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and that all other incarnations are either his plenary position portions or else portions of the plenary portions the supreme personality of godhead is shri krishna and that is the verdict of the bhagavat school of transcendentalists this conclusion is confirmed in the brahma samhita which was compiled by brahma the creator of this universe shri krishna is the supreme personality of godhead with an eternal all blissful transcendental form he is the original person known as govinda he is without any cause and he is the cause of all causes therefore only if we establish a relationship with one other upon the central attraction of shri krishna the prime cause of all causes we will really turn the concepts of fraternity and equality into workable means of lasting peace to understand a little better the principles involved we can look at the mundane relationships around us for example the husband of our sister who may may have been unknown to us before he was married to her nonetheless becomes our brother in law simply by the virtue of the shared central relationship with her and thanks to that shared central relationships this previously unknown man's sons and daughters become our nephews and nieces again all these 
loving relationship center upon our sister in this case our sister has become the center of attraction similarly if we make our country the center of attraction we designate ourselves with some limiting and divisive national label such as bengali punjabi or english or when we profess a particular faith or religion and make this the center of attraction again we designate ourselves with some sectarian label such as hindu muslim or christian thus we have chosen a center of attraction that many others cannot share with us because of because for them our center of attraction is not all attractive our relationships with one another can be perfected only when we make our center of attraction krishna the all attractive personality of godhead constitutionally we are all eternally related to krishna who is the original living being and thus the center of attraction so what we need to do is to to do to revive this relationship which has merged into oblivion because of the covering process of maya the illusory energy has fostered temporary forgetfulness therefore to begin the rehabilitation of our eternal relationship with krishna we should adopt karma yoga the first step to such transcendental realization the karma yogi can help everyone revive his transcendental relationship with krishna as his eternal servitor and the karma yogi renders this immense benefit to the ordinary living entities who are entirely addicted to mundane activities without disturbing them in their ordinary engagement in fact as we have mentioned in bhagavad gita krishna advises that in the interest of mundane workers they should not be restrained from their ordinary engagements on the contrary they may be encouraged to stay engaged in that way within the process of karma yoga ordinarily these mundaneers cannot easily understand their eternal relationship with krishna instead they themselves pose as krishna under the inducement of the illusory energy this false position of supreme enjoyer gives them much trouble as they search for lordship over the power of nature but still these mundaneers cannot give up the spirit of lording it over and when they pretend to give up the enjoying spirit under the pressure of disappointment and frustration they usually take shelter of pseudo renunciation with an even greater spirit of enjoyment the mundane workers who always desire to enjoy the fruits of these mundane activities suffer greatly under the pressing disadvantages of such activities just like poor oxen tightly tethered to the grinding mill but under the illusion dictated by maya they themselves to be they think themselves to be really enjoying therefore without disturbing such foolish mundaneers in the performance of the general activities the learned karma yogis tactfully engage them in the respective works for which they have special attachment but in relationship with krishna for this purpose only the learned and the liberated souls who are eternal servitors of krishna sometimes remain a mits of ordinary activities just to attach the foolish mundaneers to the process of karma yoga the foolish mundaneers who have been left perpetually in the darkness of foolish activities of shri krishna the personality of godhead or his eternal associate such as arjuna had not kindly taken the trouble of initiating the process of karma yoga by the direct method of personal example the foolish mundaneers cannot understand the immeasurable difficulties that confront them in pursuance of their foolish mundane activities however much they may bewilder themselves by the conception of lordship over their various actions they are always being driven by the modes of nature that is the considered verdict of shri krishna the personality of god here in the bhagavad gita he says that due to false egoism the foolish mundane considers himself the author of all activities without knowing that it is the modes of nature that lead him to do everything in all his engagements the fool cannot understand that he is under the spell of lord krishna's illusory energy maya devi who forces him to do as she desires consequently he experiences only the temporary results of his activities fleeting mundane happiness or distress and undergoes a severe penalty of servitude dictated by the modes of nature here i end the reading for today thank you for letting me serve you all glories to shrila prabhupad hari krishna